Let us now move to the second part of our calculation of the free cash flow to the firm. We have so far calculated the operating cash profits which is only one component of the free cash flow to the firm. From this operating cash profits, we have to subtract all operating cash investments for us to arrive at the free cash flows to the firm. Now, there are two types of investments or cash investments that any company would have to do. First, it has to invest in the capital expenditure of fixed assets, which is mostly plant, machinery, land and other fixed assets. And second, it needs to keep on investing in the working capital like receivables, inventories and payables. Both of these two together will form cash investments which we have to subtract from our operating cash profits to arrive at the free cash flows to the firm. Let us look at the fixed assets expenditure or the capital, ex capital expenditures that the firm would be required to pay. How do we do that? Now, we do not have any direct information to calculate capital expenditure which is what we want to calculate in our row number 17. However, what we know is that the equation of my opening fixed assets and the closing fixed asset is governed by the fact that we add all capital expenditures to our opening fixed assets and subtract all depreciation to arrive at the closing of the fixed assets. We know three numbers out of these four and hence it should be easy for us to find out what is the capital expenditure incurred in this firm. Let's see how we can do that. First of all, let's start with 2015. Let's say what is the closing balance of the fixed assets in the year 2015. This is equal to, if I go back to my management forecast sheet, my closing balance of 2015 is given by cell C24 on the management forecast sheet and I link this number from this cell and I say and I press enter. The moment I press enter, the closing balance of 2015 gets captured here. Now what we know is that the closing balance of any year is equivalent to the opening of the next year. so. What we can do is that that 2016 opening balance of the fixed asset is nothing but equal to the closing balance of 2015. We say opening of the fixed assets is equivalent to the closing of the previous year of fixed assets and I press enter. We still don't know what is the capital expenditure incurred and hence we'll keep this for a while. The next item is depreciation. I can easily link depreciation from the number above and say equal to depreciation is D8 on the same sheet and press enter. And finally the closing balance of fixed assets which again I can say equal to I go to the management forecast sheet and the closing balance for 2016 this time is in cell D24 and I press enter. So we have three numbers out of four that is we have the opening balance of fixed assets, we know the depreciation and we know the closing balance of fixed assets. Can we now calculate what is the capital expenditure incurred in the year 2016? That's very simple now isn't it right? We simply say capital expenditure is equal to closing balance D19 minus opening balance D16. So closing balance minus opening balance plus depreciation which is D18. So I repeat my capital expenditure in the year 2016 is equal to D19 which is closing fixed assets minus D16 which is the opening of the fixed assets plus depreciation which is D18. So D19 minus D16 plus D18 and I press enter, this should tell me how much is my capital expenditure in the year 2016 which comes to around 5 million or 5041. I simply now copy the whole cell here and I say control C and go to the right and say 
control V. The moment I do that, the entire cell from cell D16 to D19 gets copied to the cell up till the year 2020 and it's a simple dragging of the formula that we have been able to do here. I will simply round off these few numbers which are showing in decimal places so that everything is rounded off to the nearest integer. So this way if you notice that we have been able to find out what is the capital expenditure that the firm incurs each year up till the year 2020. Remember that this information was not given to us directly but understanding accounting equation of fixed assets we are able to derive that number based on the information that has been given to us.